In today's video, we'll talk about how to choose PC parts the right way. Myself, Mohammad Zubair, and this channel is all about showing you how to become a highly paid IT pro really fast. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Building a PC is a go-to option these days. Earlier, we used to buy a PC that matched our requirement or the PC that was near to our requirement and we just used to buy that. But now, we can build our customized PC with our personalized needs and requirements. That is why people nowadays prefer to build their customized PCs instead of buying an already built one. And building your PC is a very refreshing for many people and for some, it is a very hectic practice as the choice of the PC's component is not easy. In this video, I will try to help you by explaining every part needed to build a PC and I will explain all the necessary parts. So let's start with the CPU. Well, CPU also known as processor and we also known CPU as the brain of a computer. CPU determines and ensures how much data a system can handle at a time. There are a lot of specifications that you might consider while choosing a CPU and Gigahertz might be the first and foremost one that you might be looking for because Gigahertz in a processor determines how many cycles per seconds are taking place in the system. The more Gigahertz we have in a CPU, the better the system's performance will be. The results will be better if we go for the latest and newer model. Newer generation CPUs have the base clock and boost clock. This means they start with a particular speed and when you start working, their speed increase as per the system's need and goes into boost clock mode. The consideration you might think of can be number of cores. A decade ago, all the processors or the CPU come with a single core. Still in today's time, multi-core processors are more prominent and widely used because the latest software is designed only to support multi-core processor. Today, we have processors ranging up to 64 cores. As in case of Intel, we have different models like Core i3, i5, i7 and i9. The significant difference among them is the number of cores as i3 has the minimum cores and Core i9 has the maximum number of cores. If you want to go with the highest core count, you can use AMD Threadripper CPU and can have up to 64 cores and 128 threads. Now let's talk about the factors that affect the choice of CPU. Cache. This might affect the choice of your processor. It is similar to the system's memory but is very fast in processing. It is used for temporary storage. There are three general caches available. First one is L1 or primary cache. It is extremely fast but relatively small and is usually embedded in the processor chip as CPU cache. Then we have L2 cache or secondary cache. It is often more extensive than L1 and at the end we have L3 cache. To be clear, cache comes in MBs but it is the fastest memory in a computer system. The more cache you will have, the more faster your system will be. As your system will take less time to retrieve files to present them to you. Then we have graphic cards. If you are the one who loves to have or work with high graphics, this component is essential for your PC. Having a graphic card ensures that you have the sharpest display and your systems perform optimally. The graphic card makes sure and determines what system will render and present to you. You can get away by using the built-in graphic card for the simple task. But for particular tasks, as I have mentioned earlier, those will require you to have specialized graphic cards in your system. Some of the prominent manufacturers of graphic cards are AMD and Nvidia. AMD gets used more for gaming and Nvidia is considered the optimal choice for professional tasks. Even in NVIDIA, we have two types of graphic cards, NVIDIA GeForce GTX and NVIDIA GeForce RTX. 
Nvidia GeForce RTX has ray tracing cores and some games that support this optimally are Battlefield 2042, Cyberpunk 2077, Fortnite, etc. Now let's talk about motherboard. A motherboard is a printed circuit board and a motherboard is like a backbone of a computer and it ties the component of the computer together in one place. It makes sure that communication takes place between all the components of a system and there are different factors to consider while you choose a motherboard and the first one is a form factor. Those who do not know what form factor is, well it is the motherboard size consideration. So it is imperative to consider the size of the PC we are building and how many components we want to configure now and how much flexibility we want for the future upgradation of the system. So based on these factors, we will choose the size of the motherboards. Usually we have three sizes as mini ATX, micro ATX which is more prominent in size than mini ATX and at last we have ATX. The bigger the size of the motherboard is, the more flexibility it offers to attach more hardware devices with it. The next factor to be considered for the motherboard is the expansion option. As motherboards can connect various system components like network cards, sound cards, graphic cards, storage devices etc. We must consider the expansion ports in the motherboard. We have many expansion ports nowadays but I would suggest considering the peripheral components interconnect express which is also known as PCIe ports. It is one of the essential ports that connect most component of the motherboard today. CPU is another factor that makes a good motherboard. So the CPU socket on your motherboard can only be used with the chip line that have been designed for it. So the CPU we plan to pair or attach with the motherboard will minimize and narrow down the options. So we should make sure that CPU and the motherboard we will use are compatible with each other. Now let's talk about the RAM. Well, it is used for the short term storage space for the data and program in a system process. Whenever the system needs a resource or a program, it looks in the RAM and in case it finds it, the systems perform faster. It is a bit slower than the cache but has bigger size. At the same time, it is faster than the hard drive disk but smaller in size. We get the cache in MBs but we get RAMs in gigabytes like 2 gigabytes, 4 gigabytes and most of the system uses the 16 gigabytes of RAM. But nowadays, we are seeing systems with RAMs up to 64 gigabytes. We have a factor called megahertz. This is a measure for the clock speed, how many times per second the RAM can access its memory and is the same way we measure the CPU speed. The higher the speed of RAM we have, the higher performance will be from the system. Now I'll show you that how RAM works and how it divides up with each process into the system. So I have opened my task manager and here we have different apps that are running into my system and down here these are the different background processes. In front of each application you can see how much RAM is being getting used by each application. As you can see Google Chrome is almost using 1000 megabytes of my RAM and from my total RAM 57% of my RAM is being used and I have only 43% of RAM. So as soon as I open other application my free RAM will get to start filled and as long as it is increasing my system will tend to perform slow as it will not have more RAM free. So it is better to have more RAM than our system is intended because it will affect the performance of your system. And now let's move on to the power supplies. There are three types of power supplies in general, modular, semi-modular and non-modular. In modular, we do not have any pre-attached cable while in semi-modular, some of the cables comes as pre-installed and in non-modular, all cables comes pre-attached and are not intended to be removed. The question comes into mind that how to ensure and how to check which power supply is efficient. Well, we have something called as rating. 
सो पावर सप्लाई विद ए टी प्लस रेटिंग इज कंसिडर्ड अ सूटेबल पावर सप्लाई बट दिस वॉज कंसिडर्ड गुड बैक इन द डेज नाउ ए टी प्लस इज कंसिडर्ड एज टेरेबल बिकॉज नाउ वी हैव सम कलर विद ए टी प्लस एज वेल लाइक नाउ वी हैव एफिशंसी लेवल सर्टिफिकेट एंड इन दैट वी हैव डिफरेंट कलर लाइक ए टी प्लस व्हाइट ए टी प्लस ब्रॉन्ज सिल्वर गोल्ड प्लेटिनम एंड द लास्ट एंड द मोस्ट एफिशियंट वन इज टाइटेनियम If we talk about the efficiency of each color, eighty plus white has eighty to eighty-two percent efficiency. We have bronze with almost eighty-five percent, and with every color in the list, we have more efficiency. And titanium have the most efficiency with ninety-four percent. And by efficiency, we mean having the power supply's delivery rate. The better the efficiency, the better the supply rate. Now let's choose a power supply for our PC. because there are power supplies with different ports so to have a sufficient one is a must there are different tools and websites available that can calculate which power supply you will need you just have to select the components you are using in your system or you are planning to use into your system and it will figure everything out on its own and it will let you know about the required one so from here you just need to select your components so for my cpu I'll go with the Lenovo, and then in terms of series, I'll go with Silver forty two one four. In terms of motherboard, I'll go with the XL eighty. Then for graphic processing unit, I will select the chipset as AMD. Then for my series, I'll go with the fifty six hundred XT. Then down here we have RAM. I'll select thirty two gigabytes of DDR four, and I'll go with two RAMs. Then we have solid state drive which is SSD and I'll go with 512 gigabytes and then for my hard disk drive I'll go with 15000 rpm and at the end we have optical drive I do not want it to have into my system and here we have the result so it means we need to have at least 450 watts of power supply to make sure that our system runs smoothly and this is how you can calculate that what type of power supply and with how much watts do you need a power supply at the end let's talk about storage well there are two types of hard drives hdd and ssd hdd is less expensive than ssd but the performance of ssd is much better than hdd in hdd we store the data on the spinning disk and ssd has no physical parts and everything works in an electrical circuit and that is why it is much faster than the hdd some people install both in their system and they use the ssd for the operating system and other different programs installation and they use hdd for the data storage and backup files etc there are different ranges available from 128 gigabytes to going up to terabytes now we are also seeing the nvme's hard drives it is the latest hard drive and the fastest of them all but at the same time it is the most expensive of them for example the samsung evo 980 pro is one of the fastest out there with a reading speed of up to 6900 megabytes and a write speed of almost 5200 megabytes so the first thing we should consider for the hard drive is its capacity and the amount of space is directly proportional to your cost the more of the space is the more costly it will be and with that we are done with all the necessary components that we should choose for a pc and that brings us to the end of today's video i hope now that now you have better understanding about each and every components a pc should have and how you can choose a better one so please leave a like subscribe and press the bell icon we'll get back to you in the next video till then take care